In the middle of the Indian Ocean is an airport named Velana International Airport. It serves Mala, the capital of Maldives. The airport looks like a giant aircraft carrier, but it's 10 times bigger. Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magna Nordal, I'm a captain and instructor on ATR aircraft. If you have seen my previous videos, you may know that I am flying in the Maldives in the Indian Ocean. The main gateway to the Maldives is Mala Velana International Airport. Maldives is famous for the seaplanes, but there are also three airline companies flying Beach 1900, Dash 8 and ATR 72 on domestic routes. There are almost 20 airports in the Maldives and they play an important role for the communities in the 26 atolls that forms the Maldives. The domestic airports are also gateways for many resorts. But this video is about Male Airport. Male Airport is located on Hulhule Island and serves Male, the capital of Maldives. A few years ago, they built a bridge between Mala and the airport. Before that, you had to take the ferry. Northeast of the airport is Hulumala, which is a new city built on reclaimed land, or shall I say sand. Their new runway was opened six months ago. The old runway is now taxiway Charlie. Before the new runway was built, there was no proper taxiways and the apron was much smaller. Large aircraft had to be pushed onto the runway to start the engines, and this caused a lot of delays for the traffic. In the high season, the airport has about 850 aircraft movements per day, 250 on the runway, and 600 in the lagoon east of the runway. When landing from the south, we often fly formation with the seaplanes. And this might be a surprise for pilots not familiar with Male Airport. Male Airport is the only airport in the country with the VORDME and ILS. All other airports rely on RNP approaches or visual flight rules, VFR. Thanks to the seaplanes, air traffic control is quite busy, but they manage the traffic very well.
while you are watching this approach in Tamale Airport, I thought I would like to tell a story about the procedure I went through when I started working as a pilot here in Maldives. The details may vary from company to company and situation, but here is my story. To enter Maldives, you must either have a reservation from a hotel or resort for your entire stay, or an invitation from a Maldivian company, or a work permit entry pass, which I had. My employer put me in a hotel in Hulumala for the first 10 days, and upon arrival I was met at the airport by the hotel staff. After the first 10 days, the company started to pay me accommodation allowance, and it was up to me to find a place to live. One of the pilots in the company helped me to find a good place to live in Hulumala. The next day I went to the company's office in Mala, and after meeting the key persons in human resources, they sent me to a medical clinic for my aviation medical check. This included a visit to a larger hospital for audiogram and a treadmill test. And I took a drug test at a third clinic. Since I'm over 60 years old, the doctor asked me to have an echocardiogram, which I did at another hospital. It is also advisable to bring many passport photographs when you start in a new job. But those I already had were too dark, so I was sent to a photographer to get proper pictures. With the new medical and passport photos, it was time to send my passport to the immigration office for work visa processing. The company took care of that. When I received the passport and work visa, it was time to travel to the airport and get the security pass. Then I went to Bank of Maldives and opened two accounts. One in local currency, Maldivian Rufia, and one in US dollars. That process was a bit complicated. First, the company must issue applications for each account and make sure that you have a blue card, which is an electronic copy of the work visa downloaded to your phone. Before you go to the bank, you must download an app called QB and select the bank, the branch and the service. Then you receive a queue number. Some days after the bank accounts were activated, I received two debit cards one in US dollar and one in Rufia. The salary is paid into the dollar account and you can transfer money to any country from this account. I also transfer some money to the local account and use the debit card to pay bills everywhere, shops, restaurants, etc. I barely use cash at all. Next up was the ELO exam. Maldives almost copied the EASA rules 100%. And since I'm from an EASA member state, it was quite easy for me to prepare for the exam. And even better, the exam was very practical. Most of the questions were about the rules of the air, responsibilities of the pilots, and some definitions. After passing the ELO exam, it was time to apply for the license. And this time I needed two photos at the size of a stamp. And luckily, I had just that, otherwise I will have to return to the photographer. And in between, we have ground training, dangerous goods, CRM, first aid, fire training, safety emergency equipment, security, and a lot more. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Then it was time for simulator. I did my proficiency check and after that an assessment of competence as typewriting examiner. After completing all this I received my license and my examiner authorization.
The first ATR-72s arrived in the beginning of January, and we started flying a couple of weeks after that. Male Airport is still under development, a new terminal is under construction, and I think it will open in about three years from now. After landing on 36, we exit the runway at Delta 4, which is halfway down the runway, and this gives us 1500 meters landing distance. Most of the time we are crosswind in Male, and the buildings can create some interesting turbulence, but not too severe. Flying in Maldives is a great experience, and many of the domestic airports are both interesting and beautiful. I will talk more about this in a later video. But until then, thank you for watching, have a wonderful day, and happy landing!